today we're going to be reviewing the game Ion from our buddy John Kobu at Genius Games. Yeah, I think you met John at Origins last year, right? I did. We had a chance to meet him as well as a bunch of other great game designers and developers. Uh, we're looking forward to doing that again this year. Yeah, so if you're going to be at Origins and you'd like to meet up, send us a tweet because we would love to meet you there. That'd be fantastic. And if the great state of Ohio is a little too far for you, then you should come to Taylor, South Carolina, where we'll be hanging out for our monthly game night. Yeah, so we look forward to seeing you at Due South, but until then, here's our Terrible 2 Minute Review. Ion is a card drafting game for two to seven players in which players are trying to make ionic compounds by matching together ion cards of opposite charges. Players will play through three rounds. At the beginning of each round, players will be dealt eight cards, and then in card drafting fashion, uh, they will play a card and then pass their hand to the next person around the circle. Uh, they have to decide on their turn, are they going to play that card by itself, or are they going to bond it with another card? At the end of each round, players score points based on what ions they were able to put together into neutrally charged compounds. And they also score points for any noble gases they played, and bonus points if they made any compounds that appear on the goal cards. Players are also dealt three action tiles at the beginning of the game that they can use throughout. When they use those actions, they flip them over and reveal a negative point score. That'll be total at the end of the game. Sometimes those action tiles are pretty powerful, though, so it might be worth the cost or at least the risk of playing them. Especially because there's cards that let you flip those action tiles back over, negating your negative points at the end of the game and allowing you to use those action tiles again if you want. And I think that's basically the gist of the game. Although there are those cards that Ryan just mentioned, like the transition metals, which allow you to choose which charge you're going to play, and then the polyatomic ions, which allow you to either get bonus points or you can flip those tiles back over. And there's a radioactive elements expansion where the radioactive elements are worth fewer points each round depending on how many people played them, but they're worth bonus points at the end of the entire game if you played the most. So I think that basically wraps it up. Tell us what you think about the mechanic. So it's the same basic type of mechanic that we've seen in games like Sushi Go and Seven Wonders, but it's got a new type of uh, bonuses and a different way of matching cards, and I, I like that. I think my uh, knowledge, memory of high school chemistry definitely helped me with this game a little bit. My only criticism would be that some of the cards could use a little more explanation, especially uh, one or two of the goal cards, and I didn't like how the action tiles had the letter that dictated what set they were a part of on the side with the points on them because I, I felt like it might give away the points to the person who's choosing that set. So I think it could be on the other side of the tile theme. Uh, I really like what Genius Games is doing here in taking like hardcore science facts and turning it into a game. I think that's fantastic. I don't remember anything from high school chemistry class. And so uh, being able to go through that and review it and be like, oh yeah, uh, worked really well. It didn't feel like I was learning. It felt like I was playing a game, which was excellent. I don't want to get into enjoyability. Let me keep talking theme. I think the artwork is really great on it. I think they did a, a really good job of making it look slick and cool. I love the radioactive cards. Uh, the box is sharp. I mean, I think it all comes together really, really well to make science fun. Replayability. It's definitely an educational game, so I could see you using it a lot in that sort of environment. Uh, it's quick to learn and easy to play, so depending on your theme preference, I don't think it's significantly different from, from Sushi Go, and that's a very replayable game. Also, with the expansions and the optional cards you can play with, there's going to be a lot of uh, variety, so I'd say it's very replayable. Enjoyability. Um, yeah, I think so. Like I was saying a second ago, you're technically learning science when you're playing this game, but it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a game. You're you're building collections, you're scoring points, you're winning. The game is winning. I mean, I think it's it's super fun. I think it works really well. It's not the type of game that I want to just pick up and play every day. I mean, it's not Blood Rage, but uh, it is super fun, and I think when you play it, you're going to enjoy it. Tantrum Mouse gives Ion two, two thumbs, thumbs up. I should have... I don't know if I brush my teeth after I eat breakfast. It's okay. Tweet, we would love to meet up with you while we're there. Other things. Man, sorry, I just did not. It's okay. And it's the great state of Ohio. I think it's just you've reached your peak and it's all down home. <laughs> it is. I think cars that Ryan just mentioned, like the no, nope, not noble gases, transition metals. Sorry. Transition too much, metals. Too much science.